Good morning, my beautiful souls. How y'all doing? Thank you for stopping by my channel at the POW Revolution, where you become the light that sparks prophetic joy all over the world. So let's get down to it. Today, I want to talk about expecting success and how to go after that. So with prophetic joy, with the power of the overcoming winning warrior in the Holy Spirit anointing that you can em em embody, that you can become a master of with prophetic joy. You really can change your life. Now, something that I just, it's just been on my mind is one, one aspect of being able to move forward in success it's being able to let go of the past, being able to let go of past behaviors, being able to unload all of that baggage. And you know, that is not easy. And so I took a moment to just stop and say, well, what is it? What have I learned? And what am I doing now so that I can progress? Because my life has changed drastically um, in the last couple years. I went from being like living in complete poverty to creating my own business, which is just blooming abundantly right now. Um, I went from being the one that when pastor would call on for prayer going like, oh, no, don't pick me to having a ministry on YouTube, speaking engagements, you know, and being able to stand and, and proudly declare the kingdom of God and his message and not being shy or overwhelmed because I am <laughs> actually, I'm actually a very shy person. So I've overcome a lot of those hurdles, okay? Also just a body consciousness. My body has changed. I've went, I went down to a size eight from a size 32. And then I went back up from the eight to a 14. So I'm, you know, a work in progress and God is reshaping me inside and out. And that's a continuous elevation and growth. So in relationships, you know, romantic relationships, I've also went through changes. And I started thinking, okay, right now today, what can I do to foster like a better a deeper relationship, make better choices, make wiser choices in building that relationship, whether it's with work, with my family, you know, my children, or with, you know, future hubby. So what can I do differently? And I think that having prophetic joy, which, you know, fully, I live and move and have my being in God. And no matter what situations come my way whether it is negative or positive i've learned to stay flat-footed on the word of god and to stand strong in his spirit okay and so but yet i i have challenges you know yet i still have situations where i have to make decisions i have to make a choice should i do some do it differently this time or should I do it the way I've always been doing it? And so when I look at my relationships and I've looked at the divorce that I've had and, you know, uh, arguments and fights that, that have occurred before in my past relationships, I don't focus on them. I focus on me. And I say, hmm, what are areas within that conversation or what are areas within that um, behavior that I expressed that I could change, that I could show growth, that I could shine a little bit brighter, that I can, you know, be a little more empowered and strong in what, in my boundaries and in what I choose to create. And so in doing that, I was able to say, okay, you know what? In the past, I used to worry and have a lot of anxiety about, is this going to work out? And I would say a lot of negative things, either mentally or to my friends. I, I was smart enough not to always say it to the guy I was with, although sometimes I did. Mm -hmm, sometimes I did. And, and I said, okay, now what was the fruit of that? Well, that didn't always work out so well. Um, when you speak fears, when you speak that anxiety, when you speak that negativity, it begins to grow. And so I said, all right, 
I need to put some prophetic joy on that. I need to put the word of God on that instead of speaking to my fears. Even though the present situation and circumstances sometimes look daunting, overwhelming, scary, or like they will fail, or maybe there, there are areas that have, you know, not actually come to fruition the way you envision it. So what can I do to change within myself so that I'm more empowered so that I'm feeding with faith what I want to happen. Whether it happens or not, at least I know that I am standing in the word of God. I'm standing in my truth. And then that makes, that elevates my spirit. That elevates my joy. And then nine times out of 10, my vision will come to pass. So that is what I've chosen to do. So instead of going back you know, into past behaviors or thoughts or, or revisiting those feelings. Why not make a choice today to not regress, but to replenish your spirit. Okay. And so I was thinking, um, biblically the woman at the well. Now I went to church service, uh, Sunday and, uh, the pastor, uh, pastor Stacy from, Ooh, I don't want to butcher the name of the church, but anyway, was just wonderful. And he gave me a word, uh, well, he gave us all a word that about testimony. And it really got me thinking about testimony. You know, there are three types of ways that you can testify to the glory of God. One of that is by being a living epistle, being a living example of God's glory manifested in your life by the way you carry yourself, your character, um, the way you engage with other people. That can be a testimony in itself, especially if it's can be completely different from the way you were when you were in the, you know, living worldly or just living for yourself or just living for the flesh instead of living for the kingdom of God. So that in its own way can be a testimony. Another way to be a testimony would be to, uh, you know, teach the word of God, like I'm doing right now as I'm ministering to you. That is a testimony telling you what I have been through and how I'm putting God in that, how I'm putting prophetic joy in that. That is a testimony. And then another way of being, uh, of testifying to, uh, to the glory of God is actually prophetically giving a prophetic word divinely from the spirit of God. Sorry about my nail polish. Okay. <laughs> divinely from the spirit of God to you know, maybe one individual or to the world. That is also a form of testimony. So, but I want to focus on being, being a testimony, being a living epistle, um, and empowering yourself with prophetic joy so that as you focus on living your life for the kingdom of God, you are the glory of God. You become the glory of God. And in a way that empowers other people, even without necessarily having to talk about the word or talk about, you know, preach or go out and say, you know, if you die tomorrow, do you know you're going to heaven the next day? As we used to go out and say when I was in college campus and I was evangelizing with my church group, you know, do you know for sure that you'll be in heaven tomorrow? Well, let me pray with you. I mean, there are so many different ways, right? But just by shining brightly and standing in truth and integrity and on the word of God in the way you conduct yourselves, turn away wrath with a gentle answer and staying at peace and reading your Bible, even saying grace before a meal. You'd be surprised. I've had people come up to me and say, wow, I saw you praying before you ate. That really touched my spirit. Just something simple like that can really, you never know, can just drop a seed in someone's heart for God. I thought about the woman at the well and to kind of put together what I was saying beforehand with uh, the story of the woman at the well, she encounters Jesus Christ and she was a Samaritan woman, a woman that was kind of different than the standard Jews there that their faith, you know, kind of was deviated from the original plan that God had, um, at least in the way that the Israelites believed. And so they were kind of frenemies, 
all right and they didn't like each other very much and they fought over a well well here jesus came and he sat on the well right and of course we you know us believers know that he is the well of living water he is the life giver he is the sustainer he is the prince the royal prince the the king you know of peace king jesus on the well but she just saw a man sitting there on the well and she didn't know who he was she wasn't acquainted with him she wasn't um, she hadn't been intimate with his spirit and with his wisdom like the disciples had. And so she was just a woman getting some water in the middle of the afternoon, um, trying to avoid all the people in the town because she was living in sin. And she had had five husbands and the man she was shacking with wasn't her husband. And so this kind of woman was encountering Christ. Her encounter with Christ completely transformed her mind. And that the vision of who she was abruptly changed. She realized that her purpose on this earth and her circumstances and everything and all the choices that she made prior to her encounter with God, that her new vision of who she was and her new understanding of her purpose needed action. And that action resulted in her going back to the town, going back to the same people that she was trying to avoid by going at a, a, a different hour than the normal hour to get water. Those same people, that same town that vilified her, that looked down on her, that called her a whore, that those same people that she normally would have been ashamed to look in the eyes of those same people she came back face to face with the glory of God all over her because she had had a divine encounter with Christ when he revealed to her that he was the Son of God and that revelation wisdom and knowledge that she experienced with him that cataclysmic transformation of her mind and her spirit that occurred created an urgency for her to tell the same people that she was running from, maybe even the same man that she had been shacking with, the truth of who God said she was. And that conviction and that transformation and that truth that she spoke of concerning Jesus Christ brought half the town to the well to meet him and so when we can get in alignment with who God says we are and no longer look back in fear of where we used to be or who we used to be and choose not the behaviors of where we were but instead move forth fearlessly in faith with who God says we can be when we take action towards the promise with the knowledge and the wisdom and the glory that comes from our encounter, our time, our intimacy, and the revelation wisdom of Jesus Christ, when we can take that and put action to it, it produces results. And the way we can do that is by being a living testimony of Jesus Christ, by simply telling people how he's transformed our life but also showing it in the way we interact with them she came back a different woman she came back a woman empowered with the joy of the lord she came back as a woman that was able to say this is the son of god and i have met him face to face and he loved me he valued me he honored me and he has an ever-flowing source of abundance that he has given unto me and I believe it and I have been changed and there were people that didn't believe and there were people that did and the people that did came to see for themselves this glory of God that was all over her and had transformed her mind and her soul now 
I also did some research and I found out that this woman went on to continue evangelizing. And some say her name was Phoebe. And there's a little story about her in the Bible. A little story that Paul honored her. Just a little mention. So are you ready to be a light? Are you ready to shine brightly for God? Are you ready to be a living epistle and let go of the, the past, what people said you were, those names, those titles, those mistakes? Are you ready to make different choices this time? Are you ready to choose a higher purpose, a higher calling, and watch the magnificence of God unfolding your life instead of rehashing the past and living the same unproductiveness that you lived before? Are you ready to grab onto success without fear? Full of faith, knowing that God's promise will become evident, fully evident with your active, active choice of releasing the past and grabbing onto your future. Do it with me. I'm making that choice today. I'm choosing to let go of some negative behaviors. I'm choosing to stop eating chips and salsa <laughs> so that I can get back down to that size eight or I felt healthier and happier because that was that's my business. And I'm choosing to let go of anxiety and fears and speak life in certain areas I still was having negative thoughts about. What are your choices? I love to hear about it and I love to pray and agree with you. In fact, let me do that right now. Thank you, Heavenly Father, as we stand at your gates. We stand at your gates, Lord, with thanksgiving. Though we know that you're with us always, all the time, and that this right now is just merely a way of tapping in and just giving you glory and thanks right now. But we are here, Lord, rejoicing with you. And I'm rejoicing with each and every person, Lord God, that is hearing my voice today, Lord God. I thank you for them. I thank you that you are empowering us all to release negative thoughts, release fears, release baggage, release our past, and that we choose to identify with you, Lord. We choose to identify with the words that you have spoken over our lives and our purpose on this earth. We choose to chase after you. We choose to accept the success and the blessings that you have for us, God. We grab them with full hands and we give you all the glory and we thank you for it right now. That no matter what circumstances or situations come up against us, we know that when we speak with prophetic joy, your word, then every negativity must bow down to the power of the Holy Spirit and that you will cause us to align with your purpose because you've already gone before us to make our crooked path straight. God, we just rejoice in you and we thank you for the evidence of your blessings, the evidence of your glory in our life. Thank you for divine favor. Over everyone, Lord God, that you have given me the authority and the pleasure to reach right now in Jesus' name. We lift everything up to you, Lord God. All the rewards, all the blessings, we give it back to you, Lord God, so that it can continue to, to grow in Jesus' name and, and further the army of the Lord. So God, thank you so much. We just, ah, oh, we worship you. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Bless them with abundance. Give them a double portion of your anointing, of your peace, of your healing, of your wisdom, so that it can grow in fruition and evidence in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed and God-filled day or evening, whichever time it is that you're watching me. Take care. Talk to you soon.